Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with a fun coloring video with Copic markers. And I'm calling this the spooky potion. I'm gonna show you how to color some images from Darcy's, which are really cute little ones. There's three of them in the stamp set. They each have different sentiments with them that are really cute, but I will be using them all together on one card. And I'm going to be coloring the caramel first, and you'll notice that I'm using YR colors for this. Just know that you don't always have to use E's when you're using browns. Sometimes a YR color like this is going to make a much better caramel looking color because it's got so much yellow content in it. And I'm leaving that kind of weird wavy highlight at the top for right now because I only want to put one layer of the lightest yellow color over it but you can see how it remains looking like a highlight and you retain more of it if you don't put multiple layers of it so it's a matter of self-control and waiting till the right time to add that one layer of color to it on the apple i want to have a highlight on it i was debating whether or not i was going to do some texture in the apple as well which is why i was trying to do little lines decided that looked really dumb there's just not enough room in there to do much in terms of texture. So I ended up covering up a lot of that with my red markers. Yeah, whatevers. So now I'll color the little hat that my apple is wearing and the stick and then move on to the cupcake. And I wanna have some lighting that looks like it's coming from the center shining out on all three objects. So my highlight on the icing is gonna be on that upper left-hand side and I'll fill in the rest with orange and then I'll use some browns for some shading on it. I wanted to make it look like there's a little lip on that frosting and just do some blending with a few other colors to try to smooth some of that out a little bit. And then I'll make my little bat on top. He's so cute. You can actually um, mask that off and use this cupcake year round if you wanted to. There's lots of things we can use with our stamp sets with all different times of year in mind. And here I got a little bit on the crazy side with the contrast in my brown colors. So I ended up having to fight it a little bit. I wasn't really sure where I was headed with it, so I just kept getting darker and darker with the colors I was selecting so that I could really make that, that work a little bit better and not have such strong lines in it. I knew I wanted to have chocolate sprinkles because they're my favorites. <laughs> so I waited till the end to color them in in brown once I had my frosting done and then give them some white gel pen highlights. For the little bottle of potion, I'm gonna leave some random highlights on it. This is not scientific. I'm just adding some color so that I have some shapes that are in white and then I'll have some alternating shapes that are in a couple of different green colors. A lot of the secrets of coloring glass is, is just having some interesting shapes on it. There's no rules that say it has to be here, it has to be there. If you Google pictures of glass jars, you'll find that depending on the angle of it and where the light's coming from and what objects are near it, it's always going to look a little bit different. So you can fake it pretty easily. So I'm leaving some strong white areas that I'm going to go in and soften with lighter colors and then I'll go back in again with some darker colors and just keep working back and forth until it starts looking like a glass bottle that's kind of glowing. The label on it, I'm just going to make purple and I'm going to leave two highlight areas down the left and right hand side just so some of that lighting continues across the whole bottle and it doesn't just get completely flat, although a paper label won't have the same kind of reflections that, a, um, that the glass behind it will. But I decided to try to make it look a little bit more like the rest of the bottle and blend out a little bit more of those colors. Now here's the crazy fun lighting part. I wanted to have some potion coming out of the potion bottle. So I started by just making some little C shapes with my YG03 blending them a little with the lighter YG colors until I made this giant cloud above it. And at first I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing here. I have no idea where this card's going, but let me put a scene behind it. So let's get some, I wanted it to feel spookier and with a white background, it wasn't feeling very spooky. 
So I added some very dark blackish color and then just started working in some lighter grays. And the shapes on them, I'm, I'm just kind of picturing them being sort of clouds. So I'm almost making little curvy C shapes in lighter and lighter colors as I get toward that cloud of green. And working it into the center areas because I wanted that spout of color in the middle to be really prominent. I want it to be really obvious that all of this poof is coming out of that bottle. And that's going to be the, the main deal in this particular image. And I just get another light color until I'm just right up at that cloud. And since I wanted to make it look like this was all, the whole thing has got one big cloud from this spooky potion. It's really taken over the entire scene. I needed to bring some green down into my gray. So I'm just adding poofs of that green color, that lighter green color. And then I'll grab the darker green color. These are the same two greens that I used in the green bottle. And I'm just going to add them over top of the gray color. So it's going to make the same colors just look really dulled out and get darker in the distance since they're going to be mixed with those darker and darker gray colors. And you can already see how it just feels like this, the uh, spout of smoke from this potion has filled the entire scene and made one big spooky cloud of hopefully sugary goodness because that's really all I want at Halloween is sugary goodness. I have a real sweet tooth and I don't like spooky things so I'm not a big fan of Halloween but boy I'm a big fan of the treats of Halloween. That always makes me happy. And what's left of the card now is to fill in the bottom section so I decided to go from browns and grays in the very back and blending very slowly just with layers and layers of colors until I work toward the front and allow some of that orange color to come in from the left and right hand side and have more of the yellow in the center. You can also have the green color come in the center and, and make the green reflect onto that yellow ground but I thought the yellow really provided a, a real contrast to all of the green in the background if I were to add enough of it in the foreground and make it just a really bright, strong color. But it took a lot of color layering and a lot of messing around. Now for the finishing off of that cloud of smoke, I just used my colorless blender to add lots of bubbles. So it looked like there were lots of things roiling and broiling inside of that wonderful cloud of green potion smoke. And the sentiment from the set, hope you're Halloween is super sweet. Seemed like a good thing for somebody like me to send to somebody since I'm all about the sweets. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed this crazy puff of, of potion video and I hope you make some fun Halloween cards using this technique with some stamps you have or you can order up any of these supplies by looking in the description down below where I list all the supplies I've used for the card. I also list them on the blog along with stills that you can pin onto your Pinterest page if you want to not forget where you found it. You can hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet and click on one of these videos if you want to see more and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye!